everybody. On this week's episode of Ship Shape, we're sitting down with, what's your, what's your title, Josh? Uh, 3D artist. 3D artist, Mr. Josh Coons out of our Austin studio. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing good. We, we didn't rehearse this ahead of time. Now, Josh is normally out of our Austin studio. He's here visiting in LA. We do these syncs from time to time, because uh, for all the Skype conversations and all the emails, sometimes there's nothing better than face-to-face -face meetings. So you're here in town, and currently you're working on the Drake Herald. Correct. All right. Now, the Drake Herald's, we, we've seen work on the Drake Herald for some time. Like, we, we, we began building it last year. Yeah. And then uh, it got put on hold while other things were prioritized. But now, you know, the wheel of development has swung back around. We're, we're, we're back to working on the, on the Drake now, and that's fallen to you. Correct. So, uh, what can you tell us about the Drake Herald and what you're working on now? Uh, Drake Herald, uh, so uh, we did uh, Constellation, right after Constellation we went straight to uh, Gion Scout, so significant size decrease. <laughs> so now, uh, uh, this one will be my first solo, solo venture ship, um, so I'm doing the whole thing interior, exterior. Uh, Drake Herald is a technical single seater, but you can bring a friend along for the adventure. Um, and it's a it's a data gatherer, transporter, um, the data runner is what I'm calling it. Now, where was the where was the ship left at when you came aboard it? So it was uh, as far as like a block out. It was it was pretty fleshed out. Um, there were still some unsolved. Uh, issues with the ship uh, and some functionality was missing as well. Uh, I had to add that in uh, and start refining it down um, on the higher poly count side. Uh, and when I say that, I mean they're just, the higher poly count isn't utilized the best. Uh, I needed to push the polys out to where the player can see them. Gotcha. And uh, we had some uh, metrics uh, issues, making sure everything's in metric, so everything works. You can climb, climb into the ship, you get in the seat, you can swivel in the seat without cutting your kneecaps off, all that good stuff. It's one of those things where when we started building it out, we knew this much about how to make ships, and now that we're back to it, yeah. we know much more about making ships. So that's one, that's one of the benefits of sometimes waiting to build a ship is exactly. you, you end up learning a lot more in the, along the way and you can apply those lessons to the building of the ship. Yeah, so this is part of our pipeline now where, and this this is the stage one and we call it the white box. Second stage is gray box. Mm -hmm. And in white box, we don't go overboard. Now, what you're seeing on the screen right now, because I already started out with something that was fleshed out a little bit more. This is a whole lot more detailed than what a typical white box uh -huh. would look like. Um, but the white box affords us time, it saves us a lot of time in terms of uh, when design has a problem or if something doesn't fit or the metrics are off, we can change and iterate more quickly and with less wasted man hours when something needs to be changed, which is good for everyone involved in this process. Gotcha. So what are some of the things you've had to do here in the white box space? So one of the main things that was requested was the main cockpit uh, outer hull shape. It was a little too needle-nosed, so I have pulled it out and gave it a more uh, interesting curved shape. Um, the interior was cramped, which affected the exterior. So to get the interior metrics, for instance, there's a console in the middle of the ship where someone can sit, but if the pilot wanted to get behind him and go back towards the back of the ship, mm -hmm. he didn't have enough room, which meant the exterior hull needed to come out wider. So the ship has been widened by I'd say about five to ten percent somewhere in there. Okay. Um, that pushed things out, so that it, it changes the angles, so that all those have to be adjusted. Um, the landing gear was just not. Uh, it wasn't enough for a ship of this stature. Um, so, and this is a good example of uh, what white box geo should look like. So very simple. 
Uh, very easy to change if something messes up. We do our block-in animations, so we make sure everything is going to work. Um, not the final animation. Yeah. Uh, the animation team will will get their run at this and uh, uh, polish it out and make it look even better than it already is. Um, there's still some uh, functionality as far as uh, our uh, data modules on the side still being worked out, so that is roughed in, and I'm leaving that alone until things say, are finalized. Wait, that looks like a really elaborate bicycle lock. Yeah, <laughs> that, that <laughs> was actually your thumbs <laughs> you select the combination. That was actually shit. brought up uh, before. Is that that does look like a uh, uh, a bike lock? For a combo. That, that's how we keep your information safe. It's, <laughs> it's by a gigantic combination. It's the lock. best encryption of all time. Uh, what the, the biggest thing that wasn't implemented that needed to be implemented was uh, the, uh, and I'm just calling it the satellite array for now. Um, so for the gameplay of uh, transmitting, transmitting deep space or receiving, uh, it needed to deploy this satellite array and we had many concepts on what that should look like. So, waited for final say. Um, uh, Roberts picked the one he liked, and I executed it and blocked in the animation for it. So, you'll be hovering out in space, transmitting at about that stance right there. It's like a data version of Death Blossom. Yeah. Uh, the uh, entry was not on metric. Uh, this is very important because you're dealing with uh, a known known, which was the ground. The ground does not change, that's at a level. So when the ground's involved, you have a known metric, which is absolute, absolute ground. So that dictates the metric of entry and exit. Uh, this used to have kind of a um, small, like private jetliner-esque type fold-down stair, and it was yes. not metric. Um, actually wouldn't work at all, so. Uh, going back to the style guide for Drake, um, we push it back into an automated ladder, uh, and then a slip cover door. Drake's a very and seal, yeah. utilitarian. Yes, very, exactly. Very, very, just what works, yeah. what do we need to get it to work, and then stop what, there. How do we get them in there? Ladder, done. What are these inside the, uh, the intakes here? So those are another change. Um, those are upgrades from the previous design of the wing size one missiles. Yeah. And uh, we went with a size two and upgraded more, uh, more missiles to that. Now do we know, were you part of the discussion on why they upgraded the missiles or do you just Hey, they told me to upgrade the missiles, and I did. So as far as how that came about, if I pull up a concept for you. So we had these concepts, and we had this, this little bit that you can see here, and um, I'd asked about it, and I'm like, are those missiles, or what, what are those? And I knew we had a, a wing missile, and uh, this, is, this is why we white box. Um, we white boxed out the metric for a size one missile. It is not at all this size. And it just looked like this little, little dainty accessory. <laughs> Even smaller than what I you see in this shot. It's just, it's so minuscule and small. So uh, right here there's a, uh, a, a gun mount now. And on the bottom, gun armament. They wanted the ship to be like uh, super, super fast. Um, the firepower as far as like guns, not maxed out, but it's got, it's got a good payload of missiles and then it has a good, a good amount of uh, countermeasures, flare launchers, which have been proxied in back here. That's where they'll, they'll deploy. So I think three to one uh, chaff and flare. So two, two flare and six chaff. So lots of countermeasures and then you use these big bad boys to get out of those sticky situations. Every time I look at this, I think 
talked about how people are going to use these as drag racers. Oh yeah, that's uh, another another design intent. Yep. It's like they, they, they may not be able to beat you on the turns, but on the straightaways, the Herald is going to haul. Oh yeah. Um, I was working on this, and I was like, yeah, this is like one of those. Uh, the, the first initial rounds of concepts, so I was like, oh, that doesn't look as cool as it could. And it, it literally reminded me of like a funny car. Just, you know, straight line, let's go as fast as we can. And uh, that's, that's part of my mission for, uh, uh, once I get past the white box, we go to the stage gray box, and that's where we start refining uh, the looks of it because the design's nailed down. And you said you were working on both the exterior and the interior. Correct. Have you begun work on the interior yet? Uh, yeah, it's a little rough right now. Um, there was some stuff there previously. I can pull that up as soon as Max is done saving. Uh, so for the interior, we have, uh, like I said before, we were having um, uh, metric issues for how cramped it was. Uh, this will be the cockpit area that is still being um, finalized uh, since we have some new gameplay elements. Uh, we're figuring out how that affects the UI scheme uh, up front, or if it will at all. So. Um, I've elected to hold back on that until an answer has been uh, okay. figured out. So uh, entry door, uh, there will be a weapons rack here that was requested, so I blocked out a space for that. Uh, we have our console, which is also being metriced out as well, finalized as far as uh, how to look on screen, making sure everything's like visible within uh, one. Uh, that, FOV. Yeah, they're not just there to be cool. That they're actually. Yeah, you're gonna usable. be you're gonna be doing stuff there. Um, yeah, the biggest problem was there was a, a chair here. It came out into the hallway. And I'd say this used to be about meh, yeah. there. So not only could you not get by, but if you sat in the chair and went in, it would probably squeeze all of your intestines up through your throat uh, from hitting that. We call that emergent gameplay. Yes, that is. That's some good gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, pushing back uh, these server racks, these server racks actually hold um, other gameplay elements. The, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the components. I had to make sure all those have their spots. So we've got some in the floor, some in the ceiling, uh, some on the side walls. They all have to be accessible. Uh, this is a rack for another set, as is the Matching on the other side, we've got your base <laughs> kitchenette. Yeah, base kitchenette, microwave. Um, I'm gonna have to spiffy that area up a little bit. Uh, all in one shower combo. Also, this is being metriced out. Um, I prefer to spend my time making a ship look really cool and missiles and guns and stuff, and less on uh, the toilet. <laughs> right, right now that showers down onto the toilet paper. This is a problem we had with the original Starfarer yeah. blockout. Yeah. Do you uh, do you pull or roll down? Which way does the the toilet paper roll go? These are all decisions over, over that have to be down. made. Yeah. Toilet paper goes over and down. Yeah. If you're an under, you're wrong. I wonder if that's different per country. I, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> uh, we also had a. Uh, <laughs> What this appeared to be a couch. It appeared to be a couch in the back, and uh, I need to get that more sci-fi. So this little block here, that is the metric for uh, a single bed uh, bunk. So that's what that will turn into after I art it up. So yeah, that's, that's as white box as it gets. <laughs> Literally a box. <laughs> Literally a box. It's actually not even a box. There's two sides missing to it. So that'll be where you sleep. Uh, some cabinetry. Uh, today I'll be doing some ceiling passes, uh, finalizing where the ceiling's going to sit. And then uh, as the information's fed to me on 
screen details. I will push pull those where they need to be. And also the most important part, the, uh, the captain's chair, which I'm gonna save for last. And that is the interior thus far. Yeah. Now, if I were designing this ship, yeah. and I'm the incredibly lazy person that I am, mm -hmm. there would be a track down the entire center of the ship and the, and the captain's chair would just move from the front all the way to the toilet. All the way back, and you just you could, you could just go through the entire ship without ever getting out of the captain's chair. Uh, we got a little bit of that, so you'll have. I think you'll walk to about yay, and the chair will slide back, rotate. You'll sit, rotate, comes back up, and puts you in position because it gets a little tight back here. You can't exactly walk around, um, and that's everything <laughs> on a hidden which probably makes no sense to anyone. <laughs> well, um, hey man, Josh, thanks for taking the time to sit down and show us the, the Drake Herald. Oh yeah. Uh, obviously, this, the, this is still a work in progress. Uh, it's not gonna be in your hangars anytime real soon, but uh, we are working on it. We got, uh, we got this guy on the case. Interior next year, man. It's gonna be cool. This ship was not my favorite. And it is growing on me. Yes, it, it does that. It does. It's it's this yeah. weird, ugly duckling that the more the more you stare at it, the more you work with it. Yeah. You just get you. Plus, at certain angles, it kind of looks like the brain bug from from Starship Troopers. Yeah. When I uh, first started on it, I was looking at it from the front. I'm like, this thing looks like a tick. <laughs> it just looks like a big tick that's full. All right. I'm Jared Huckabee. That's Josh Coons. This has been Ship Shape. There Thanks. you go.